Hey everyone, and welcome to episode 55 of the Self-Publishing Roundtable, the podcast by indie authors for indie authors. I am your host, Wade Finnegan, and my co-hosts for this evening are Carl Sinclair, Kevin Michael, hey. and special guest host, Darren Wearmouth. Thanks, Darren, for stepping in the last minute. We appreciate it. <laughs> uh, John and Trish are on vacation. I don't know how they worked that into their contracts. Uh, but they did. Um, and I did want to, before I introduce our guest, just give a little quick shout out to Carl for even being here as uh, he is now proud papa for number three, Grayson. Right, number three? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Chris. <laughs> Grayson uh, came into this world here recently, and uh, wife, his wife was so kind to let him actually do a podcast tonight. So, appreciate that. All right, so our special guest this evening is YA author and book promoter Jason Letts. Um, Jason is the co-creator of the uh, book advertising site BookSends, um, and that that's going to be kind of a primary focus tonight. But of course, he is an author too. Uh, he started his uh, writing career, I think, around in 2010, writing some YA fantasy, uh, one of the series Powerless, um, and then followed that up with a paranormal romance. Uh, titled Inevitable, and both very successful. After that, he moved on to a YA dystopian uh, with Spencer Nye series, um, and then a uh, busy guy as Jason is, co-founding the Kindle Fire department blog, and then running the, this now site, BookSends, um, while also still continuing to write. Uh, Chimerian Unraveling, I think, is what he's working on right now. Yeah. So our discussion was centered around that switch from writing to running to a book book promotion, and it's excellent we have Darren on tonight because he has some direct insight to that. And then, uh, you know, some tips on how to advertise our books, uh, getting picked up by ad sites, and anything else we can do to sell. So, Jason, thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. We really appreciate it. Absolutely, Wade. Thank you so much for having me. It's awesome to be here on the Self-Publishing Roundtable. You guys have put on an amazing show for so long with so many great people, and I'm really honored to uh, have been invited and, and to be able to join you on here. Oh. Thank you very much. Appreciate that as well. Yeah. You might not um, feel like that after the show. <laughs> that you do now. <laughs> yeah, Carl, Carl will make that go away for you real quick. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So I think we're going to start off with Kevin tonight. Uh, I know he's got some questions in the queue. Um, and, of course, we'll, we will talk about the, the author side of you, but I think the one that's been creating the most buzz is uh, is your advertising site. So. Why don't you tell us a little bit uh, about uh, BookSends, and then uh, I'll have Kevin fire you some questions. Sure, absolutely. BookSends has been going for a about a year and a half now. It's an email discount ebook promotional newsletter. goes out daily. Readers select the genre that they want to hear about, and they get personalized recommendations in that genre. Uh, currently, we have about 75,000 subscribers, and, and that's really active subscribers, too. We really focus on just, just keeping the ones who keep coming back. Uh, and, um, yeah, so I, I, I think it's been going well. It's, it's always a work in progress. Um, got to keep finding more people, keep getting new readers, and, and got to keep uh, introducing them to the excellent books that we're, we're really proud and privileged to, to be promoting from so many awesome independent authors, Small presses, big publishers, you know, we've got everybody in there trying to absolutely get the, the best books possible out to the best readers possible. Uh, I guess the, the first question I have is, uh, you started out and you'd written um, three full um, book series. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about them? Absolutely. Uh, I, I did a little bit of writing back when I was in college, but it, it really took off for me when I was living in Japan for a couple of years. I got into it writing, writing YA, kind of you know Harry Potterish age level kind of stuff, and uh, it, it was really fun for me to do on cold winter nights in this little tiny town in Japan. It, it ended up being something that I I really was able to get into after I came back and was struck by the inability to get a job in a horrible recession. So. In 2010, I started publishing, and and it was a really, really exciting new way to interact with readers, getting read, being able to publish like that, and getting paid for it. So the, the journey has been absolutely kind of wild with a, a lot of ups and downs. There were, there were times where 
you know, things just seemed to be amazing. It was, you know, I was in this group with Amanda Hawking and David Dalglish, Daniel Aronson, kind of amazing, you know, a lot of the, a lot of those people from back then, you know that, you know, just so many people in one place who really had so much potential and who ended up really making it big. So, you know, there were ups and downs for me personally, um, times when I was just, felt like I was locked into the, you know, Amazon top 500, BNN top 200, but so, I mean, even though that went on for a couple months, a few months, I, I could tell that it wasn't going to last. It was a really great situation. I was able to write to my heart's content. It was all I was doing. But I, I became very aware that Amazon and Barnes & Noble, were, they were selling my books. There, there was no question about it. You know, they, they were doing the legwork, and it was, although it was extremely generous of them, I could tell that it really was not going to last forever. The, the, difficulty, the difficulty clearly was reaching readers. That's, that was the problem that I needed to find a way to solve for myself in the best way possible. I was, I was happy with how my books were selling, but finding those new channels was just really difficult. So that's why I, I started the Kindle Fire Department, trying to get a blog going, trying to find a way to bring readers together and introduce them to uh, new material. A lot of that was just, it was happening right around when the Kindle Fire was first released in 2011. And uh, yeah, from there it's been a, just a big journey of trying to find more readers and, and make it work. Things have changed a lot since uh, 2010, 2011. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a steady slope of, of changes. Um, the one thing I noticed, because you did, you did Kindle Fire Department, and then you went over to Book Blast, which became Book Sends. But I, I noticed for a while you were doing both advertising for Kindle Fire Department and Book Sends. But I saw recently that you can't um, submit ads to Fire Department anymore. Is what what particular reason is there for that? Uh, absolutely. So it's it's really been a transition, and uh, you know, you if you're familiar with uh, sites like You Reader News Today or Pixelink Today, a lot of them. Pixel Vink. A lot of them focus on a model where you where you have a blog and you're driving traffic to it from Facebook, from social media sites. We we've been transitioning into email as as Facebook became less and less a reliable means to reliably reach our our fans. So it, it got to the point where I uh, I wasn't comfortable with the you know the the dropping level of traffic had to essentially stop selling ads there and, trition, and uh, transition fully into Book Blast, Book Sends, which has, yeah. has worked out great, and we've been building our audience there. Yeah. Jason, I, I totally get that. Um, just from evidence as an author, you, you can see um, with Candy, Book Gorilla, just to use no, another example, you see that um, the main impact is from the emailing list, and I'm guessing you're kind of backing up with that and um, I, I've had great experience with Book Blast when I first launched my book and BookSense as well. We always we always get good results. It's it's fantastic. Um, I, I'm kind of wondering, um, you know, the, the whole Book Blast, the BookSense and, and how it's grown. It's, it, it's a great tool for authors and um, you know, it's, it's, it's nice to meet you in person, um, yeah. even though we've emailed. I, I'm I'm just wondering how it's growing. I mean, and and how do you handle that growth compared to the amount of submissions you probably get from indie authors now? Absolutely, that's a great question. And I've got to say, first off, Darren, that it's you know it's been a pleasure working with you. I'm so glad that we've been been able to uh, help you get your books out to more readers. Even today, we've got you yeah, on today. Yeah. And, uh, today looks yeah. Like it's, yeah, it looks like it's going great. Um, very pleased yeah. to say. And uh, so, it, yeah, it's definitely been a challenge. The, the, growth, the growth situation has changed a lot. And I, I've got to say that although, although it has been, you know, pretty good, we're getting, you know, thousands of visitors and, and you know, almost as many new subscribers a week. It's growing, you know, very steadily. We're constantly trying to lock in new partnerships, new outreach mechanisms, finding new ways to get people in. You know, we're, we're really not done. There's a lot more readers out there, and I think to, to get it where I want it to be, you know, it, it needs to be stronger. It needs to have more people in. That's that's really where where my motivation is, is um, trying to 
to increase that growth even more because you know as you can tell from you know competitors other places there there is a lot of room to grow there's a lot yeah. more a lot more areas that we can get into now um one one question I have is um you get tons of submissions um but a lot of authors when they get rejected you know from your site or you know bookbub or another site they don't know why their book is getting rejected if you could share like what what are the most common reasons why a book gets you know rejected for advertising absolutely you know one one of the things that I like about what I do I I handle all the submissions personally I I know Bookbub, who who I use and who I appreciate, they they do a great job. They, you know, generally send out a form if you're rejected. I I really try to do the best that I can to identify the problem that I'm having with getting a particular book onto the site. I like to provide personalized feedback, and you know, to to just give some specific examples of of things that I worry about when I see in books. Uh, a lot of the times, it does boil down to the cover, you know. Um, if there's uh, some specific things, really, just silhouette covers, I I just have a problem with. They they just tend to get a lot less attention, whether that's with some kind of silhouette figure or just kind of a f few colors and and shapes. You know, sometimes you have those like kissing couple silhouettes. It seems like a good idea. I, I have a silhouette on my first book. You know, it it just seemed like a good idea, but generally, for when it comes to selling, it just does not excite the same amount of interest as you know um, better visuals would otherwise yeah, I, oh go ahead no, sorry I, I, I kind of get that because it's um, it's about a conversion rate as well isn't it from um, you advertising to people getting to the site so it, it has to um, be a little bit eye candy and appealing to be able to um, transition through to the store and get a sale Absolutely. On, on the one hand, you know, our lists are competitive. So, you know, I'm looking for the best titles out of the ones that are submitted. And 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 that means, you know, some titles probably aren't going to make it. For the ones that get in, absolutely. The, the conversion rate is, uh, is pretty much the whole game. If, if you think about it, you know, you look at book sends, email, you've got, you've got pretty much everything somebody needs to make a decision about whether they want the book. You've got the cover. You've got the description. You've got the price right there. So when people click, usually it's with the intent to buy. And so we're, you know, we generally see 40, 50 percent conversion rates. Sometimes even higher. You know, sometimes less though. And and so depending on where that conversion rate falls, that's where you where you see a results for a promotion being, you know, fantastic to good to not so good. It's a one way of thinking about it is, is big data on a small scale. If you're showing an ad to all these people and there's 300, 200, 300, 400 who click on it, what's the aggregate behavior of that small group of people on this book? Are they convinced to buy or are they like, meh, eh, it's okay, are they going to pass? What do the majority do you, uh, of them do? That makes a difference. Yeah, have you seen any patterns in the conversion rate? I mean, do you, do you, do you think that there's anything that um, brings people in, or or not? Um, is it reviews or is it cover? What do you think? Uh, well, it, it's totally a combination. What what the way I think of of the reviews, I'll just handle that specifically. You know, people submit. They a lot of people sometimes ask, "Can I submit new releases? It has no reviews. Is that okay? I've got this book. It's just got a couple." We don't publish the number of reviews on the email, so that's something that people find out later. So I really see that as something that's essential to getting that high conversion rate. The, the general process, people are looking at the ad, they say, okay, this is interesting, I'm going to click, I'm interested, I, you know, I might buy. When they finally get to the product page, they, you know, they scan, they get the full description, they check out the reviews, and that's, and that's that last moment where are they convinced are they not? Is there something in the reviews that's that's holding them back, or are they just not convinced because there's only a few? So, so having having more reviews helps me take out one of the variables to producing a successful promotion, which is what I'm trying to do every time. Good point. Uh, Erica Conroy has a question from the site. 
She says, uh, how do advertising sites like Kindle Fire Department and others uh, that have the word Kindle in it get, get around the trademarking rule for Amazon Associates um, where it says you don't include it in the domain Facebook group or anything like that? Are they just putting it in the domain but getting around it by having a way different domain name to the actual name of the site? Uh, yeah, so, so that's something that has come up over the history of it. Um, for the entirety of the Kindle Fire Department, the domain name was fireapps.blogspot.com. So there was there was nothing in there that specifically caused an issue with that trademark. Certainly, there are other sites that that do have Kindle in them, and and yes, they clearly are in violation of that trademark. Uh, we did have you know just a Kindle Fire Department Facebook page, which we were forced to change because of you know, um, messages straight from Amazon. So they required us to do that. Otherwise, you know, there were going to be problems. So that was something that did have to change. So so as for what's out there now, um, if it's in the URL, they those site owners are at risk of getting a message like that, which Amazon is somewhat required to police themselves. Otherwise, they're at risk of losing their trademark. So it's it's a little bit of a complicated thing. A lot of some of these site owners are taking risks, and you know then it, you know if you fly under the radar, great for a while, I guess. But it's something that could always catch up with you. Okay. Now I have, I have a question for you. You've been both a successful author and you run uh, the book site. Um, is there anything that you wish that you'd known when you were an author that you've learned since you started running BookSense that would have helped you earlier in your career? Yeah, that's that's a great question. I'm constantly thinking about it. I'm I'm continuing to write new books. I'm paying attention to, to, to what's going on in, in a variety of genres, and it's and it's been interesting. Um, you know, it, it takes more than even just like a, a you know a nice flashy cover, or you know even even a great idea. There there is some luck involved, but there there's also hard work involved, and it's and it has to be consistent. You've got to realize that there there are serious, you know, you've got to treat treat it like a serious business. There are expenses, not just in advertising, but you've you've got to find a way to both clearly fit into a genre and differentiate with a brand, and and that you know, so it's it's kind of like threading the needle, I guess, is the way that I would put it. Where where you're you're striking a, a nerve with people, people are immediately able to recognize you know what they're looking at, but then also they you know see something different about it or there's there's some sort of innovation. You know that maybe that sounds vague, but you know that's that's the trick I think for that a lot of authors have to face. Well, yeah, it makes sense because you want to be you know definitely in a box, you know, like paranormal romance or cozy mystery, but at the same time you want to add your unique twist to it. Um, so, but, but you don't want to be out there writing like random stuff that, that doesn't fit into any genre. Yeah, yeah. You know, reminds me, just just as a joke, a couple of friends, you know, they wrote this like it was a kind of like, you know, evil puppies, you know, stuff like that. You know, it sounds fun. Evil Puppies novel, and you know maybe they hand sell a few copies, but um, you know if, if if you can't think of the audience or the reader that you have in mind for your book, then you're going to have a hard time contacting them. You're going to have a hard uh, time did, reaching them. And did you promote the Evil Puppy on Book Sense? <laughs> I, they, fortunately, they never submitted it to me. You know, so I, I may have dodged the bullet there, okay. lost a few friendships or something. <laughs> okay. Now, would you recommend and on that line? Would you recommend like picturing an exact kind of like audience member and then writing the book like specifically towards that audience? Uh, you know, I I think you could do worse as a strategy to start with. That's something that uh, I believe Stephen King recommends in on writing. You know, he he has sort of an ideal reader who who happens to be his wife, and and I think there were, he mentioned a scene where he was like driving and and you know he kept looking over you know. To see her reaction to various parts of the book that she was reading, so so knowing who you're writing for, what their tastes are, what their interests are, and and having a, a good understanding of you know what else is working in your genre, what are other authors doing, that was that was the big uh, adjustment for me just from from my 
moderately successful first series to you know book series number two that that really you know kind of took off there you know I I understood the genre a lot better and what people were looking for and I was able to to tailor that within what I was interested in writing about. Now, um, you make you make your money on on growing your email list as as big as it can be, and you know authors really need an email list. Also, um, do you have any advice on how to expand your email list, at, both as an author, um, just to be successful? Absolutely, having a reliable way to contact your fans is is the whole game. You know, if you own it, if you own the the method of reaching your fans, then that's something that no one can take away from you. That's not something a Facebook algorithm change can switch up or you know something that can can just go away. So there there are some obvious things, you know, maybe, you know, if there are people who who don't know, be sure to, you know, set up a account either a free one with Mailchimp and get a link in the back of your books so that in the back of your ebooks when somebody finishes up, they want to contact you, they want to get involved. Make sure that it's very easy for them to do that. Have it on your website. And and there's more than just uh, more than just email. I'm, I've actually been contacting, um, talking to a, a group called uh, Trext, T R E X T dot M E is the website, and they do text-based mes messaging to audiences. So I'm kind of checking out how that could work for authors too. So there there's a lot of ways out there. Things are constantly innovating. If somebody contacts you just you know to say hey I liked your book just as a, a fan fan letter. Do point them to your email newsletter. Don't don't let them just you know fade off or disappear after a while with a, a thank you and some you know warm fuzzies in your stomach. Mm. Now, are you are you actively doing Facebook and Goodreads advertising to try to grow the site or? Oh uh, well, yes. I mean, we're we're constantly advertising. You know, uh, the expenditure that I make, so much of the money that authors give us, just gets funneled straight into getting more readers. If you, you know, to, to get a little bit more analytical about that, something that, that might be interesting for just authors to think about generally is, you know, say, say you're trying to promote a book. How many readers do you think you need to get one free download of a book every single day? How many do you need for one free 90 cent or uh, one paid 99 cent purchase? Then think about how many you need for 10 or, or you know, 100 or something like that. Then you can look at the cost for each of those readers, getting them in. When I started up with Facebook advertising was, was the primary way of doing it. That's how e-reader news today and Pixelvink really generated their audiences. It used to be possible to get new readers for, for roughly 15, 20 cents, sometimes you know, a little less. You could shave off pennies. So, so it was very possible to put together um, a big readership without a huge cash outlay. Um, Facebook has changed a lot since then. These days, if you're trying to get readers and you're looking at something like, like Google AdWords, you can think about you know, maybe paying upwards of $2 a subscriber. So you can look at how the math changed for your original estimate of how many readers it takes to to get people to buy every day, however many amount, and then you change that so that the cost of getting that person is now 10 or 20 times higher. So that's that's sort of the the math that I'm facing. There are there are other things, um, you know. I've I've tried Goodreads advertising a little bit, and um, uh, their their system just uh, is is not cost effective in the same way. I've tried you know Bing Yahoo and and you know, there's some things going on there, but in, in my personal experience, I've uh, had issues with a lot of bots and fake traffic, which you know is, is something that luckily authors advertising through these sites don't have to worry about. There's no chance of getting a bot to actually do anything on on our newsletter because they automatically bounce out. They they're just gone. So. Uh, yeah, the focusing on the costs and, and trying to get as many people in and in as I can at the most cost-effective rate is really what it's all about. Okay, now um, Jason, um, 
um, firstly, I'd like to thank you for the service that you, you give to us because um, um, for an indie like me and some of these guys here and some of the people watching, it's um, it's excellent, you know, and, and whenever you get um, an advertisement with Book Blast or Book Sense, um, you get a real good effect from it. But um, And it's invaluable. And you also get the personal touch, which um, you don't get with some of the other um, um, promo sites, which, you know, it, it, it feels different and it's really good. But what I was wondering is, and, and you, don't, you don't have to give away any trade secrets, how did you take it from nothing to where you are now? Uh, well, I've, I first of all got to say thank you for your very, you know, kind comments. We love to have you on, at, you know, anytime, and I love being able to work with authors to find a way to make it work as, as often as I can. You know, I I wish it were better. I wish it was more reliable. I wish it was just infallible. Advertising is, you know, risky, risky business, and mm -hmm. and it's certainly been a, a long, a long road to getting to where I am. I I wouldn't say that when authors are thinking of a promo site, BookSense is the first one to come to mind. It's it's probably definitely not. So there, there's room to grow there. But Well, um, uh, don't, don't undersell yourself, Jason. I mean, <laughs> because um, I guess of the approachability of, of what you are and the results that you get, then, you know, it's very high on the list. Oh, well, I mean, a lot of that is uh, thanks to authors like you writing great books and then, you know, <laughs> Allowing me to help out with them, and then and then telling other people, you know, in the various ways that you have, you know, that's that's really kind of the cool thing. So if you're my customer, I I really expend no energy trying to get customers. You know, it's everything that's out there is authors talking to each other. That's that's what sustains me. The only thing that I'm trying to do is get more readers, and it's a challenge. It's not easy. So so it's kind of cool that that's the way it works. So, so how did you take it from? Um, I mean, you had the um, the spawn of the idea and everything. I mean, um, how did you end up where you were? I mean, you don't have to tell us the trade secrets, you know. It, uh, but oh, oh, oh well, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm, because I'm, because there's, there's there's tons of other sites around um, that have minimal results that offer the same service as um, BookSense. Um, but you seem to have um, risen above them um, uh, amongst the ranks of like some of the most respected in the indie world. So I, I, I'm just curious uh, about the journey. Absolutely, I'm I'm incredibly fortunate to to even be where I am. You know, if you think about it, in just the last couple of years, there's really been nobody new. You know, which which kind of speaks to the difficulty of gathering readers. There's no new big site really that's coming out. No one's no one's able to really kind of come up from scratch to, to put up huge numbers. For for me, I mean, it's just treating it like a business. It's reinvesting, and mm. you know, I, I wish I were able to reinvest more, and um, you know, find new ways, getting creative about about bringing people in. You know, we we have done a variety of things. Um, you know, maybe one of the things that's that's worked best for me has been really trying to get into the Amazon App Store as much as possible, trying to have a presence there with a, you know, a variety of, of things that, that just get the name out there a little more, allow readers to, to just stop by and keep adding in. But, but a lot of it is just you know, taking the money that comes in and passing it right over so that you know, I'm, I'm continuing to kind of respect the, the economics of, of what it takes to run a business, and that includes substantial expenses. I, I realize that, you know, a lot of, sort of like how a lot of authors just kind of, you know, they, they start with a, a bare bones budget. They maybe have almost nothing in the way to, to spend on a, a, on a book or putting together. A lot of people are starting sites in kind of the same way, where they're, you know, just kind of hoping that there'll be some kind of flock to their site when, you know, there's already so many others. Every day there's so many new out there trying to do what I'm doing. Yeah, well, I, I will say, Jason, that um, uh, it's an excellent service and well done, sir. I, I appreciate that. That's that's what I'm doing it for, you know, to, to try and make it work as often as I can. Really appreciate it, and I, I really appreciate having all you guys here to, to talk about it. I'm, I'm happy to get honest feedback from from anybody. You know, I, I like to talk about results when I can, you know, when, when something comes up. If someone needs to, to hear more about, you know, number of clicks or 
you know, how, how it worked out, what I think might have happened. I'm happy to talk about that. And, and what's cool, too, uh, one of the most recent things that we added to our, our newsletter is a, a uh, survey, feedback survey. So it's really cool to get responses from our readers. Sometimes just as an author, you, you know, kind of just see the numbers on your sales page. But it's cool to see the readers say, you know, I really love this book that I got last week. I, I told my sister. I told my cousin. You know, I, I told everybody, you know, I love this book. So it's really cool to hear, hear about people liking the works that we're advertising and, and promoting on the site. Carl, go ahead. You got some questions on the site? Yeah, there's a few questions on the site from the live viewers for you, uh, Jason. The first one's from Jay Thorne. Uh, he says, <laughs> how does uh, sales spikes uh, from services like BookSends affect Amazon rankings, and how is that different from 12 months ago? He also says, by the way, big fan of Jason. He's done great things for my books. <laughs> Smiley face. That's awesome. I appreciate that. Jay Thorne's a great, great dark fantasy horror writer who I've personally enjoyed some of the, his books. Um, yeah, so so thinking about the the sales spike, what's going to happen? You know, there's still you can expect a lag from when sales happen five or six hours later. That's when you're they're going to finally show up in your Amazon rankings. Rankings are are nice, and and what you want to do is you want to create as much visibility as possible on the Amazon bestsellers list. The kind of the cool thing about the you know, the, these services is that people are using them in tandem. You know, they use BookSense, they use BookBub, they use ENT today, and they're able to shoot up into, you know, the top 100 overall or, you know, whatever. So it, it's really cool. Um, as for the rankings, uh, one thing that people sometimes don't realize is that even though they, they may see, see the results happening on just the first day, uh, a single appearance in the newsletter usually generates about 30% more sales than just on that first day. So people continue to check in on the second and third and, and even fourth day, even if they, they didn't look at it right away. So there is a tail with uh, even just one placement in the email newsletter. Yeah, I, I, I would kind of um, go on to that as well and say, um, I know people are um, enemies of Kindle selects and everything like that, but if you can couple a down deal with something like box ends, then um, it it works out very good usually. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and I don't know if Jay Thorne's watching. I saw his show on SPRT, and he, he seemed like such a great guy. You know, <laughs> I'd love to talk to him. But anyway, you should. You great. should. He's very he's very approachable. Yeah. Uh, yeah oh, absolutely. The seventy percent. Be, being in select, being able to run a countdown deal, get 70%, it just it just makes it so much easier. There's so much more cushion in the royalties, and, mm. and, it's, and it's really awesome. You know, I, I really love it when we're able to, you know, move hundreds and hundreds of copies, when we're able to, you know, see authors double, triple the input, you know, the, the cost uh, from their royalties. It doesn't happen every time, but, you know, that's, that's what we're shooting for. Yeah, I, I guess that that's what I was driving about before with the um, the pattern recognition of um, uh, what you can see. But I, I suppose it's it's impossible to discern what the reader's taste is. But um, it, it is know. challenging. You know, it, yeah, it's some. You know, I, I do my best to to try and select books that I think will do well. You know, some sometimes the the audience doesn't react and. And sometimes they, they really surprise me. You know, a, a book that maybe was languishing in the you know the rankings of hundreds of thousands suddenly you know just catches fire, or just waiting for something. And and when that happens, you know, it the sales can really stick. If if you've got a, a great package, it just needs a little bit of exposure. Then you know, I, I've heard from people who say you know, Book Sends was the start of a amazing month long, two month run. You know, and, and it you know it doesn't happen as often as it should. I wish it happened every time, but it's just really cool. Um, we've got some more questions coming in from the website for you, Jason. Uh, next up is from Tucker. He says, uh, "Do you have any demographic uh, breakdowns of your subscriber list, or another way of asking?" He says, uh, "Any specific genres that um, seem to prefer perform the best?" Absolutely. Well, yeah. So I I, I think the the general the general audience would be majority women, majority, you know, 30, 40 plus. 
would be would be just kind of a, a general way to think about the the largest chunks. That was sort of the issue with the the Kindle Fire Department blog and just having one Facebook page where you would pitch every book. It really made it hard to to make it work for authors of you know smaller genres or or just plain authors who weren't writing mysteries or romances. You know, it was hard to to price. It was hard to get results. So being able to have book sends and each distinct genre category, it's it's allowed me to uh, to pay a little bit more attention and get, and uh, more effectively try to get results based on on what a cost should be. So um, we we I love it when we get results for smaller genres like horror, science fiction, things like that. You know, sometimes those books really take off. Fantasy, you know, we've we've had some really great results there lately too. Really, you know, the readers are just waiting for great books, and when they see them, they don't hesitate to download or buy. Fortunately. That's great. Um, another question in from Xavier Granville, the Canadian sensation. Uh, he says, "In a perfect world," and my son's shouting in the background. In a perfect world, would you think Amazon could do? Uh, what do you think Amazon could do to help promo services like BookSend see better results? That's that's certainly an interesting question. In in a sense, when you when you think about Amazon affiliates, you know, in in a sense, I'm I'm working for them. So, so in in a way, they might see it as you know counter counterintuitive to having them help me and then also pay me. You know, might, might not work out in in their thinking. Uh, but you know, um, having having the the smoothest purchasing process possible. Clean product pages. I, you know, I wish the review system were better because, unfortunately, there there are things like fake reviews or or really just kind of silly, erroneous reviews. I I wish there was a way that if you know if they got enough downvotes, they would just kind of really not be visible. But in, in a lot of cases, we do get submissions where, unfortunately, there are old, outdated complaints about something, things that were changed. And and they're just stuck at the the top that you know one star at the top of the product page and most prominent review, that's going to impact greatly conversion rate, true or not, you know which may be unfair in some cases. It, it, just it, if you've had anyone who's like a, a like big arguments with you on email, you know about um, not being able to be submitted. Uh, I mean yes, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, and, and I mean I I could tell you some horror stories. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, kind of, I'm sure you could. <laughs> I mean, one that's just inescapable. I mean, I'll probably never forget it. It's just so astounding. It's just, um, it, it's kind of a cool position for me being an author and doing this and just being around for years in the ecosystem, knowing a lot of the authors, reading the comments. You know, I know a lot of the authors. And, and you know, some sometimes you get people, I just know that they, they just plain don't use editors and some of them kind of flaunt it. And it's like, you know, uh, some of them, their argument to me why they should be able to get in without needing an editor is that they're able to get on my competitors. <laughs> you know, and, and I'm, you know, and I'm, you know, major, major sites. They're, well, you know, I can get on there, and I'm, I'm sorry, I, I have uh, higher standards. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that to my readers when there's, you know, just obvious complaints. So, so some, in some cases. I, I completely understand being highly attached to your work of art and and having maybe a little bit of willful blindness, I, I guess you could say, you know, with uh, with its flaws. But um, you know, it's it's just the reality of if I don't think I can get good results for it for any reason, I I really try and and respectfully decline. Yeah, and I guess as your popularity grows, I mean that that. Becomes more difficult uh, about what you're going to um, select, but I mean, how how do you balance your writing with um, running the business? Because I'm guessing, because it's quite popular now, it takes up a lot of your time. It, it does. Um, I mean, I'm not doing it alone. So uh, you know, I I have staff members that I work with who I'm I'm very lucky to have, and uh, but yeah. Uh, and and certainly, book sense takes up a huge amount of time, but. I, I love writing. I, I love being able to tell stories, put it together. I love the books that I create. So 
I look at, at it more as fun than work, so and I always have time for that. <laughs> have a uh, another question for you, Jason. This one's from Mimi Strong, aka the Gen, uh, John Rahobo. Uh, she <laughs> says, Jason, uh, the book Sims forms these novellas are unlikely to be accepted. Is there a word count cutoff, or is it about spots available? How do you like thirty thousand words in size? Uh, thank you, Mimi, for the question. <coughs> I. Uh, you know, it, it, so many times it, it is a judgment call, but when when we're looking at the discounts that we provide and you have reader expectations for what they're going to get when we're asking them to, to hand over money, a, a lot of times, you know, just novellas may not work out that well. And the same with short story collections. It, it can be a tough sell. You know, exceptions occasionally, you know, can be made depending on the situation. You know, I, I, I try and do what I can, but but a lot of times, thirty thousand words, forty thousand words, you know, sometimes even fifty thousand words. If, if there's another book that's got equal appeal with a higher word count, that would encourage me to accept the other book over that one. A lot of great novels out there. Um, yeah. <laughs> I would uh, I would also recommend to anyone who hasn't yet uh, to check out uh, Mimi's uh, newish blog, uh, John Rehobo. It's really good. Uh, we posted I think we posted about it last week, but I'll post it again. You should definitely check it out. Great author. Um, okay, so I think we want to go to Kevin next, right? And yeah. then yes, um, okay. there's been a bit, there's been a uh, a pretty big a non-announcement announcement that Amazon is going to start uh, a, a service where you can get unlimited books in their their library, like special library for nine ninety nine a month. How do you think that'll affect both authors and uh, your site? Yeah, it's a, it's certainly an an exciting development. We'll have to see what happens. I, I guess the the general perception is that this will be an outgrowth of the Kindle owner's lending library. So in, in some way, although users are readers who pay 99 a month, will be able to just read as many books as they want. There'll, there'll be some level of remuneration. This seems to be in response to Oyster and, and Scribd. And, uh, you know, as, as for what kind of impact it has on authors, uh, I think it depends on on what they, what if the level of the royalties is the absolute same, or or what happens there? Uh, you know, it, it's certainly all speculative. How it'll affect me? Well, if suddenly every single reader gets their book through this Kindle Unlimited, then you know maybe I'll be out of a job, or maybe it'll have no impact and it's just kind of a token response to those other services, and then nothing will change, or maybe it'll be somewhere in between. So. Uh, I guess we'll see. What do you think? <laughs> now, my my wild speculation, because obviously Amazon doesn't check with me about anything, um, is that Bezos I mean, doesn't contact you personally to put things by. He doesn't. Mark Mark Coker doesn't even contact me personally. They all do with me. I don't know why they don't like you. <laughs> no, but I think uh, the global fund right now is at 1.2 million. But I remember a couple years ago they had it up to about 4 million because they're really trying to encourage select. This is just speculation on my part, but I think they're probably going to bump it up maybe to 3 or 4 million because they're assuming a lot of people are going to sample a whole bunch of new books for the subscription. So you may end up getting more borrows or downloads or whatever you want to call it. Um, but I think they're going to try to keep the, the pay rate um, at a certain level so that it'll even out is the general feeling that I think. But I could be completely wrong. I, I, I kind of think that um, it's a marketing tool that they're using to expand their own readership where they, they can hopefully attract people in or get um, dormant readers to uh, read more books. And I don't blame them for it on that score. And obviously, if you're an avid reader, you'll take advantage too. So it'll have a cumulative effect, but um, the impact on us um, outside of that um, is for me at the moment, is unknown. 
Yeah, I mean the the Amazon is launching their their smartphone on July 25th, and this program, when it is officially getting announced, will be a great companion to that because you're going to have a bunch of people that are getting a brand new phone. That will be um, some of them will not be Amazon traditional customers, and all of a sudden you throw 9.99 unlimited books at them, and you hold you get a whole bunch of new kind of casual readers. Yeah, so it's it's interesting how this, you know, looking at this 9.99 price point in comparison to the rise in the price of Amazon Prime. So maybe they're thinking that they are actually losing. I mean, you know, Amazon Prime is a very big service, but to kind of carve out just this little piece of it for the eBooks, you know, it's an interesting move. Maybe they think there are some people who aren't going all in for Prime, who who still they can hook into a subscription service. Mm. And, and the, the, uh, I suppose um, going back to books, and um, it's it's a good thing of being as an author, being in KDP and going in select that you can go with book sends and you still get the 70% rate on a countdown deal or something like that. So it all works in conjunction at the moment, which is good for everyone. It, it is very cool. And, and you know, really, I would presume that if Kindle Unlimited came out, I'm sure at some point readers who were part of it would become, you know, some of our subscribers would join Kindle Unlimited. And in that, play, in that situation, they'd still probably want to, find a way to find out about new books. So even if they're not directly buying, maybe they're just, you know, downloading for free or however it works, you know, maybe there's still a, an even easier way for readers to use our service and authors to get paid when they're being promoted on it. Could be good. Yeah, it's, it, it's such an easy way, though, isn't it? I mean, you, you get the email in your inbox, you see what's uh, on offer, and you can make a choice because there's not only one book there, there's a few. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool, um, you know. But but I'll say, and, and obviously this this format has been around for a couple of years, but I I really don't think it's the the only format. I think there's still a lot of space out there in the kind of the ebook promotional distribution kind of market for other models. I, I I'll tell you that I'm going to be coming out with something soon that you know should really really work for more long term promotions, for more more reliably for for new releases, more um, on on call, I guess you would say. You know, so so based on someone else's schedule rather than can I please have this date? What works for you? You know, so I, I I'm hoping to be able to diversify my offerings more in the future. Mm. Yeah. All right, uh, Carl. Did you see any more questions from the side? Did we did we get all those? Um, I'm still going through. The comments are moving quite quickly tonight, so unfortunately it is a little bit hard to keep up. Um, I I did have a ridiculous question, but we won't bore Jason with it. It was, uh, is marketing is marketing cheating? Uh, I don't think you really want to bore us. Uh, was, that, was that a sound from that. Yeah. Is marketing cheating? <laughs> it was a it was an interesting conversation that I read once, Jason, and I won't bore you with the details. Okay. One one question uh, I do. Uh, question. Uh, Ronnie, uh, I can never get his last name wrong. I'm so sorry, Ronnie. Ronnie Curie, uh, as an author and promoter, I'm curious what Jason thinks. There are uh, some of the best ways to reach YA readers, uh, which seem much more difficult to reach. Absolutely. Uh, YA has been kind of a tough one for the, to get traction on, and and I think that's because when when you look at who's who's buying YA novels, they're they're really mothers, they're adult women, who are also equally kind of um, buying full blown romance or just just other genres. So it's it's kind of tough, and and I think there there is a lot of opportunities to to even do more offline marketing with YA. I know people who've done various conventions and shows, more trying to get into bookstores for signings, library review copies, things like that. You know, I, I know it's really tough. But but they you know they are selling and the, the genre is kind of resilient. So even though it can be tough and there have been kind of a lot of there's been a lot of movement in the genre from fantasy to paranormal to dystopian and and there always seems like there's a new, new hot 
sort of wave going on with YA. Uh, now, uh, something I'd like to know, Jason, is um, uh, it, when you started Book Blast and everything, was it purely indie? Because um, I, I see some traditional titles now with books in. So how did that kind of develop and who who gets in touch with you now to uh, advertise on your site? Yeah, uh, so I mean, uh, when, t when we started off, it was all indies primarily. And, and as time went on, as I said, I really just don't do anything when it comes to contacting authors or publishers. Just, you know, mm. authors talking to other authors, you know, somehow that bled into traditional authors, contact, traditionally published authors contacting us, and then their marketing directors contacting us. You know, yeah. just as people kind of, you know, heard about the results, heard that we were getting traction, they, they liked what they saw. I can tell you that I've, you know, I've had uh, sit-down meetings with some, you know, big New York marketing execs, and I can tell you that they're they're very aware of what all of these sites are doing and the results that they're making. And so, you know, for for some of these other sites, you know, they they kind of they know they're paying attention to your results, and if you're not hearing from them, then you know that that maybe says something. You know, we're yeah. we're very fortunate that we're working with. Practically everybody at this point, in in some respect for another, you know, all the publishers are different and they have different scenarios. But it, it's been cool, and uh, I think it's it's helped, and uh, I think it it just um, it's good that I'm able to accommodate a wide variety of published situations. No, I, I think it's um, totally cool. You know, um, you started off as India, we're doing well and everything, and and to seeing what your um, doing and they've come in and, and thought right okay what's going on here and they want a slice of the pie which shows that you know outside of their own loop that um, things can be done and done successfully and you've done it. Yeah yeah it's definitely been interesting on that score um, yeah so we'll, we'll see what happens <laughs> mm. if it continues to go well. Now, I have, I have one more question. Most people that are authors have come, al come around to the idea of spending money on advertising, but there's a lot of authors um, that have problems. They think it's going to be too expensive. Um, do you want to go through, you know, like the range of what the prices are to advertise on, uh, on BookSense? Sure, absolutely. It's, it's understandable that people have hesitations, and everyone has their own budgets, their own expectations of, of what's going to happen. Uh, for for book sends, depending on on genre, ads can go from anywhere from ten dollars to um, over a hundred dollars, depending on on what it is you're actually promoting, what the price is, and uh, yeah. So uh, just you know, thinking about what you're what you're hoping to get out of it is really important. What's important to you? Talking to other authors about their results and, and keeping in mind that every book is different. So I, I would highly recommend that people test the waters. I, I love finding ways to test out books on you know smaller lists to just, just see what the reaction is. Maybe instead of going for mystery thriller we, we just try action adventure to reach generally the same same audience at less than half the cost. You know that that can be a good way to do it. So uh at some point, even though that these uh, Amazon product pages last forever, the the traffic to them doesn't. So you you've got to find a way to get some attention, and I'm, I'm happy to help. Yeah, I, I can kind of about that with my experience that I've had with Jason, with um, um, because I've done like three different scales of pricing, and I, th I think we had a, a ten dollar ad uh, on the horror, and we got a, an excellent result out of that. Um, I think we spoke an email about it, didn't we? And and then we had the sci-fi one, and then today uh, we've we've got the bestseller. And already, I, I, I just checked it while we're online, and uh, you know we're at um, 350 sales today already, and, and a lot of that would be down to book sales. Awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's great. You know, that that's really what I'm doing for it. For I'm so happy that it's working out for you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, awesome. Congrats to you for writing a great book, you and Colin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, be the, well um, we, we wouldn't be able to get this kind of visibility if it wasn't for your kind of services. Um, 
so yeah, well, there's thank you rather than thank me. Yeah. Yeah. So it it does play an important part in in the the process of you know the post publishing marketing process, getting visibility, finding ways to to get attention. And and I I have heard from authors who you know they've done big promotions like this, and then all of a sudden they're getting contacted about a Kindle Daily deal. You know, so so there's other people paying attention to who's making big jumps in the rank. As soon as you're up there, you're finding a spot on the bestsellers list. You know, it, it could work out very well. You don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, they, they do look. I mean, I, I um, uh, I, I had a, a few beers with a, um, one of these acquisition editors in London down there, and um, oh really? Yeah, I believe and he, he mentioned like um, tons of books. Um, uh, indie books uh, that um, people probably didn't even realize and uh, they, they're scanning it more than probably what people think you know for um, what performs what doesn't well and uh, um, what's going well in the charts and and obviously if you use book sense then it, it boosts you up there and puts them right in front of their eyes so it's um, it, it gives everyone a chance that's really cool that you had that conversation. I, I wasn't aware of that. One one thing that I did hear about is that the the folks at Amazon they they have some very clear technology that measures the engagement that readers have with books. You know, are they finishing the book? Where do they fall off? Things like that. So so yeah. they're able to tell exactly you know how readers engage and whether or not people are actually making it through. And I'm sure that informs their decision on what they're going to promote and get involved in. Yeah, totally. I mean, um, they, uh, uh, they they look at the read through rates and the buys and everything like that. And um, this is what I talked about. I mean, they bought, they bought um, one of my series, um, and uh, it's going forty seven north. And they looked at the read through rates and um, the reviews from people who are actually readers, um, rather than um, disgruntled indies. And um, yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, they bought it off the back of that. And uh, yeah, I was. I mean, uh, the um, the data, I'd love to get into the data that they've got, but um, unfortunately we're not allowed. Um, but um, yeah, they, 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 they do look at that kind of stuff, which, which is encouraging for all of us. Oh, yeah. yeah at some point, you know, I, I do some stuff with apps too, and, and we tried to put together sort of an alternative Mobi reader so that maybe people who aren't such big fans of Amazon could still read these you know books that we're promoting and and we're going to try and do analytics and things like that but I mean I, I can't tell you what kind of a, a wretched year-long nightmare that was to try to get that work and it eventually kind of just sputtered out into nothing but you know you got to try so uh, you know yeah absolutely uh, finding ways to get more data is uh, a huge part of what's going on with the internet these days <laughs> yeah. alright well we're, we are coming up on the hour and uh... I think uh, uh, we it was really insightful. J for, I want to say first off, Jason, just thank you so much for your candid honesty and uh, sincerity. You've been really good wealth of information, and it's almost been a little bit of a love fest in here between you and Darren, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Not just there. It's been everywhere. The, uh, <laughs> the website has been blowing up with comments of, uh, of love and respect for you, Jason. I'm going to pretend that it's not all just to suck up to get a bit of placement on the list. But <laughs> it works, though. It I'm works. sure they do love you. Uh, and uh, Darren uh, and, uh, has been instructed to keep talking because his voice is more soothing than whale sounds, which is surprising <laughs> to me. I think I have lived in England, and I know he's from Yorkshire, and that's just not at all accurate. I think it's a... Uh, I think it's a, a simple case of Americans thinking that all accents are sexy, sexy when they're blatantly not. But. Well, all British accents are. Come on. <laughs> He's from Yorkshire. Come on. Uh, wait, wait. Um, I, haven't little, 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 wait. I haven't got an accent. Um, you know, I'm, <laughs> you're the one with the accent. Oh, it's what a we dialect, say. right? Isn't it's it? a dialect. Oh, oh, dialect. That's, yeah. <laughs> they, they don't mind. Uh, apparently, when the two of us talk to one another, Darren, it's also quite soothing. So I'll have to start the Darren and Carl show. Or maybe just show up on Better Off and Dead again. Yeah, well. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> always just really good yeah. stuff. Yeah. 
<laughs> we could we could talk about the cricket again, I suppose, Carl. Um, I love a bit of cricket. How 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 well did Jimmy Anderson bowl last night? Pretty good. Oh, oh yeah, he, he, um, Gavin, he's, still got, he's still got a chance Gavin. to get on the honest board with, with a five four. I hope he does. Look, our, our, viewer, our viewers are dropping off, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Should we wrap it? Yeah, I need to wrap it up. Uh, but again, Jason, thank you so much for coming on. It was great, and maybe we could have you back on again sometime later down the road if. We didn't, oh, uh, absolutely. Uh, thank you guys so much. I appreciate this so much. Thanks to everyone on the, the website making comments. You know, I'm, I'm just trying to do my best for you guys. That's what it's all about. Thanks for uh, doing this great show, Self-Publishing Roundtable. Again, it's been a pleasure. If you guys need anything else from me, you know, just get in touch. Thank okay, so if people want to give you all their money, where do they go to give you their money? Uh, I'm usually down be behind the VFW with a big <laughs> burlap sack. <laughs> You know, if you just want to dump it in. <laughs> Does it have a, a dollar sign on the bag? Yeah. <laughs> you can trust me, Steve. <laughs> Is it booksends.com? Is that what you're yeah, oh, Okay. Oh, oh there's a the real question. Yes, booksends.com. Check it out. And, uh, and, and yeah, so uh, feel free, free to get in touch. Booksends at gmail.com. You know, if you just want to discuss something, want an opinion, I do my best. If for some reason my email is uh, flooded because of this, you know, give me a, a couple days or something. But, you know, I, I love just talking to people. So thank you guys all so much. Thank that was you. great having you on. So you gave out your, your email address. Does that mean everyone with an evil dog book should email you about their content and cover? <laughs> well, if they, you know, they'll probably get a sale from me. I'll read it, and then, you know, we'll see what happens from there. <laughs> my, uh, my honey badger novellas are coming your way. <laughs> I feel like I need a shower or something. <laughs> also, um, you should check out our our latest uh, blog interview. This week it's with uh, fantasy author Robert Crane, and yes, then that's also that's uh, really good. Kevin, you're doing awesome. Yes. And then next week, Wade, do you want to tell them the guest for next week? Uh, Susan Butler will be on next week. Uh, a new adult author. Uh, uh, just all around fun gal, and uh, we're going to talk a lot about uh, tracking. She likes to track different, all different types of things, and so we'll talk about that. Uh, she also happens to be in the comments live today, and yes, she's been one of the ones commenting about uh, Darren's accent. So watch yeah. out for that. Oh yeah, maybe maybe we'll have to have Darren on again next week because you know Susan will be on. So yeah. <laughs> she might not. She might not be on the book. Or something. Oh, there you go. Well, well, uh, well one wouldn't <laughs> like to commit to one's. Uh, yeah. No, that's why I can't do it. <laughs> Uh, if you guys that are listening would just be so kind as to give us a thumbs up on the YouTube and head over to iTunes and give us a review, we'd greatly appreciate that. Um, even and you know, Carl, uh, I want to say I appreciate you because uh, being a new dad, it. I know it can be can be a tough tough one, and uh, you you made it through. So yeah, congratulations. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. I um I named him after um, my favorite comic book character, so. That just shows that I'm a complete geek, and that's not just a gimmick for the website. I'm, I'm surprised your wife agreed to it, but yes. She didn't know at the time. She worked out later. It's too late then. She Googled it. Um, just before we go, uh, I thought you guys would appreciate this in the world out there. Mr. Wow. Holy <laughs> yeah, nice. Nice. It just got handed to me by the wife as well, so there you go. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks everybody for watching. What do you say, Carl? So how do your mums for me? There you go. Oh, wait, t-shirts and stuff. They went yes. out. Everyone's been posting pictures with their, their t-shirts that they got the other day. Go buy spurt swag. Yes, help, help the cause. <laughs> I tell you what, no, um, I can't say that because that's against the terms of service, but we'll, I'll get back to you. So how do your mums <laughs> for me? Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Thank you. And...